Morning guys, my name is Belinda and I'm a Pilates instructor in Harlow in Essex and I'm going to do a mixed ability Pilates in pyjamas for you this morning so I hope you've got your PJs on and you're ready to go. So we're just going to keep things fairly basic today, um, it is a mixed ability session so I will offer options to make things more difficult but please don't uh, take those options unless you've uh, got a little bit more experience with Pilates. Um, just take your time with the exercises and if anything hurts or causes any pain or discomfort, please don't do it. Um, I will talk about alternatives as we go along or if that exercise just isn't for you, just leave it out for this morning and then uh, we'll have some different things to look at for next week as well. So I hope you're going to join me every Saturday morning for Pilates in pyjamas. So we'll start with a warm up as we would with any class. Um, we'll do probably about perhaps six exercises, um, six or seven, just a few of each one. And then we'll have a, a short release stretch at the end of the session. And it's going to leave you raring to go for your Saturday. Just make sure that you've got some room. Make sure that you've got a mat as well. And within reason, you're not going to be disturbed for 30 minutes. This is all about you. So let's just have a think about our posture to begin with. So we're standing nice and tall and the feet are hip width apart and the knees are slightly soft. So don't lock the knee joint, but at the same time, don't bend the knees, just soften the joint. Now the tail tucks under slightly to create a neutral spine. So you've got that nice natural curve at the base of the spine there. And we'll talk about that more as we go along. Collarbone open, so that brings the shoulders down and stabilise. And the hands are at the sides. And then you're just going to pop the chin back slightly as if you're going to give yourself a double chin. We won't do that, not attractive at this time of the morning, but it will bring the ear in line with the shoulder. OK, so let me just uh, tip this a little bit so that we can see exactly what's happening. But just take a moment to take a couple of breaths for me, please. Lateral thoracic breathing. So you're breathing and the rib cage expands, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And on your next breath out, I would like you to drop the chin down towards the chest. Inhale, release to centre. And then on your next breath out, we're going to look over the shoulder. Inhale, release to centre. Drop the chin down to the chest again as you breathe out. Release to centre. Don't tip the head back and look over the other shoulder. And release. So we can keep that going. Chin drops down, then turn. Chin drops down, feeling this draw through the tops of the shoulders there, base of the neck, then looking over the other shoulder. Keep that movement going for me, please. And just be very aware of that movement. Listen to your body. Make sure that you don't push that too far. Just stop at your range of movement. One more, dropping the chin down. Looking over the shoulder. Dropping the chin down. Nice smooth movement. Looking over the other shoulder. And release and we can do some side bends so just a gentle bend sliding the fingertips down towards the knees make sure you're not leaning forwards or backwards and usually we breathe out as we perform the move so that lateral thoracic breathing breathing through the rib cage and keeping a nice flow of movement so there's no stop, no start. We can make a little bit more from this side bend if you want to. 
so you can bring the arm in as well but you don't have to do that again listen to your body and just take that movement to where you feel comfortable and release okay what we're going to do is just take the feet a little bit wider for me please so step nice and wide with the feet and turn the feet out onto 45 degrees there knees are still soft tail is still tucked under lovely posture through the upper body and we're just going to do some gentle bends into the knee from side to side now make sure this knee doesn't come further than the toe keep the hips facing forwards and just think about setting your core muscles for me please to 30 percent so you've got your transverse abdominis that wraps all the way around that's like your internal corset as such so you're making that deeper connection rib cage to hip and you're drawing up through the pelvic floor to floor three so just a light engagement to stabilize we're going to take the arms wide. We circle one arm into that knee bend. Nice and smooth and controlled. Again, make sure there's no discomfort through the shoulder or the knee. If there is, just reduce the range of movement slightly. Or you could just roll one shoulder instead if you prefer. The point is we're getting some movement through the shoulders to warm up through the shoulders, the knees, the hips and the ankles. One more for me here and then we can just pop the fingertips across on the tops of the arms. Don't overthink the elbows, keep them just relaxed and make sure you're comfortable through the feet. And we're going to do a torso twist. So hips stay facing forwards. And you've still got that light engagement through the core. So I will keep reminding you about that one, but imagine you're drawing your hips together to meet, drawing up through the pelvic floor with that internal elevator. Hips stay facing forwards and just Again, the timing is with the breathing. So you don't have to be going the same pace as me. Keep the breathing quite natural. Don't overthink that. But as you breathe out, you turn. Okay, and release the hands and we can walk the feet back in. Now, I always like to start my session with a balance exercise. So we're trying to use our core muscles to help us balance. So drawing in through the transverse abdominis, pulling up through the pelvic floor. We're going to rise up onto the toes and bring the hands to shoulder height and slowly come down. I'll turn side on so you can see what's happening. The heels lift away from the floor. Don't worry about wobbles. Just try to make sure you're using your core to stabilize. Nice and smooth and controlled. So we've got our six key principles of Pilates. A lot of instructors teach this in different ways and some training providers have more than six, but back to the very basics as, as created by Joseph Pilates himself. We've got six key principles and control is one of them. And you're really controlling that movement up and down. We can make this a little bit harder by bringing the hands higher and trying to get the hands down to the floor before the heels. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. And if you come off balance, that's fine. Just step away from the movement. Come back to where you were reset your core lovely posture and try again whoops it's good for strengthening the ankles this one the stabilizing muscles and we're beginning to use the core to help us balance
So as I say, we're just keeping things nice and simple this morning so that it's achievable for everybody. And release and give the legs a bit of a shake. So make sure you stop off at the level that suits you and you rest at any time that you want to. Okay, we're going to move into a Pilates roll down with a press up. Now I'll show you what we're going to do. You can get going, but then I'll talk about alternatives and what you could do if you need it. But the thing about a Pilates roll down is trying to stay as still as possible through the pelvis for as long as you can. So we're standing nice and tall and the chin drops down, shoulders round, you roll down one vertebra at a time, try not to bend the knees, the tail will start to tip at some point. Come as far as you feel you can, then you bend the knees and you walk forwards on the hands into a press up position, four point kneeling position. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips, back in neutral. As you breathe out, you keep the core set and you bend the elbows so the forehead lowers towards the floor and release, don't lock the elbows. Then you tuck the toes under, take the knees away so the weight is in the hands now. Walk back towards the feet and slowly roll up and return back to where we started. Now, if you're happy with that and you know that movement, that's fine. Work away, start that for me. But what I can talk about is alternatives. So if there's any osteoporosis through the spine, we don't recommend any forward flexion. So you don't need to do the roll down part of what we're doing. You could just come down to the floor and work through the press ups. Also, if there's any problems with vertical, you might not like that up and down motion. It could set your head off. So if you're happy with what you're doing, keep going with that. But let me show you what you could do instead. We could do a press up. And just to sit back for a stretch round the back. And then you do a press up, keep the core set, sit back for a stretch. But I'm going to assume that you're happy doing the roll downs and the press ups. Now the difficulty element on your roll down is the precision. So trying to keep the tail towards the floor as long as possible. There's a light engagement through the core, walking forwards on the hands. We can make this more difficult by taking it into a three quarter press up where the hips are in front of the knees. The back is still in neutral. The core is still set. You still drop down towards the floor. You tuck the toes under. You take the knees away from the floor before you start to walk back with the hands. And you could, of course, do a full press up if you wanted to. But I'm going to stick with the box press up. So we stretch into the backs of the legs. Remember your back is in neutral. Try not to sit back on the knees. Keep the weight over the hands, nose between fingertips. Breathing nice and controlled. And we can do one more and we can stay down there. So exhale, rolling down, stretch into the backs of the legs. I'm just going to tip the camera slightly so you can see clearly what's happening when we're on the floor. So once you're down there, have a rest, have a stretch. Okay, we are going to come into a swan dive. And a swan dive is an exercise to strengthen through the back, 
little bit of mobility as well through the glutes and the hamstrings. So your swan dive, you come down onto your tummy in a prone position. Hands either side of the head here, elbows down, shoulders down and drawn together. Nice line through the neck, don't drop the head down to the floor. Let me show you what we're going to do. You can get going and I'll talk about alternatives. So we're going to inhale and come up, exhale, come down and extend the legs. Straight, 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 don't lift too high. Release the legs and then come up with the upper body. Coming down, pubic bone stays in contact with the floor, extend and straighten the legs. So if you're happy with that one and you know that one, work away. Now, if you weren't sure, you could just do the upper body if you wanted to. Try not to turn it into a press up. Elbows stay down. Try not to hunch the shoulders around the ears. Shoulders down and retracted. So the hips stay on the floor. You could also, if there's any problems through the neck, place the head into the hands and just work through the legs. Try and keep the pubic bone down as you lift and extend. Engage the core. Try not to sink through the belly button as you do that one. Breathe in as you come up. Breathe out as you come down. You could do just one leg if you preferred. If you don't like doing both. Just make sure you don't tip, hips stay on the floor, and then obviously do the other leg. You could make this a little bit harder if you wanted to. As you come down, extend the arms with the legs, then release hands back to the head. Inhale, up, exhale, down, arms and legs. Rest whenever you need, but let's make this the last one. And then sit back for a stretch. Hold it here. Okay, let's do the torso twist. So torso twist. Sitting tall, feet can come together to begin with. Hands can cross over at the tops of the arms to begin with, similar as we did at the start in the warm up. Shoulders down and stabilized. Make sure you're sitting on the seat bones. You could take the feet wide if you prefer, but again, make sure you're on the seat bones and make sure you're not tipped back. Your choice. As you breathe out, you turn with the upper body, keeping the core set. As you breathe in, you release. Let's go the other way. Now try to lead this movement through the lumbar spine, not through the elbows. So you're not pushing the elbows around the corner. You're twisting and turning, a bit like a mannequin through the waist. Make sure you take that to wherever feels comfortable for you. And you should feel this in the back, not the hips. Keep going for me, please. You could try it with feet wide, if you prefer. Again, feeling this in the back, not the hips. Use your core to sit straight. You could make it harder again by extending the arms. But the danger is with that one, it becomes too difficult and the hip flexors get involved, which is what tends to happen with me. So I tend to prefer to do this one well at a lower level. Nice and controlled, and it's a strength exercise and mobility for the back. If you weren't sure, don't forget feet together, and you could just keep the hands down. So one hand to one knee, one hand behind you, and assist that torso twist. Then we can release and re 
reach forwards over the legs. Have a stretch. Okay, let's come into an exercise called scissors. So scissors is a strength exercise for the core and we're going to lay down on our back for this one. But the position of the pelvis is important and the position of the back because we're looking for a neutral spine. So coming down onto your back, make sure you support yourself as you come down. Okay, get yourself comfortable. Make sure head to tail is on your mat. Feet are hip width apart. And we're going to just look at this neutral spine. So pretend you've got a ball balanced on your pelvis and we're going to do some pelvic tilts. So we're going to push the lower back into the floor so the ball rolls towards you and then release that movement and push the tail into the floor so the ball rolls away from you. Lower back pushes in, ball towards you, lower back away ball away from you and then settle into a midway point between the two so the ball would be perfectly balanced on the pelvis and then use your core muscles to set this position so you're drawing in through the transverse abdominis it's that deeper abdominal layer okay making that connection rib cage to hip and pulling up through the pelvic floor so scissors it's toe taps it's a modern variation of scissors you've got 90 degrees on the knee so single leg fold back stays in neutral though when you lift that leg make sure you're not pushing off the resting leg and we drop the toe down towards the floor so you tap the foot but the movement is in the hip not the back of the knee and you could do six on one leg then six on the other leg or to make this a bit harder, you can work from double leg fold and you could do 12 in total alternating legs. Whichever you choose is fine and you should feel this exercise on your tummy and perhaps a little bit on your thighs, but you shouldn't feel it in the back. Keep going for me. If you feel this in the back, it's potentially one of two things. Either your core isn't set or you've made the, the exercise too hard and the tummy muscles just aren't quite strong enough yet. If you're working on one leg, don't forget we're going to change leg after six. So that's probably about now. And the important thing is when you're working with one leg, make sure you're not pushing off the resting leg. So the resting leg is quite light and the pelvis is still and the pelvis is neutral. So you should feel quite a deep tension across the tummy there as the core is working to keep still. Rest at any time, sorry, the core is working to keep the pelvis still. Rest at any time if you need, but just six on one, six on the other, or 12 in total would be fine. And we're probably there or thereabouts. Just make sure you're even when you stop and have a stretch. So take the arms into a don't shoot position. Hold it here. Feel that lovely stretch across the chest. And then bring your feet back towards you one at a time. And we're going to do a real classic Pilates exercise shoulder bridge. So with this one, we're just going to keep it nice and simple today. There's lots of variations from shoulder bridge, but I wanted to keep things really pure and simple. So the heels are in line with the seat bone. Um, you've got a nice line, foot, knee, hip, core, lightly engaged. As you breathe out, you squeeze the glutes, tilt the pelvis and peel the hips up away from the floor. Now you're lifting with the hip and the pubic bone rather than lifting with the rib cage. And then you slowly come down again, one vertebra at a time if you can. Don't forget to squeeze the glutes before you go. So exhale, tilt, peel and slowly roll up. Now some teachers, and the classic way to teach this is that the rib cage comes up, but some teachers, like me, I keep the rib cage down and just working really hard through the glutes there. So there's no hyperextension through the back. 
Make sure your feet are hip width apart, peeling up, and it's all about mobility. And it's very simple to make this one harder. Just cross the arms over at the chest. And we're just keeping this nice and easy today. Make sure you're still setting that core so you've got that engagement, transverse abdominis, pelvic floor pulling up. Exhale as you come up. Squeeze through the glutes. Inhale as you come down. And it's a great one to concentrate on your flow of movement. So flow is another key principle of Pilates. So keep that going for me. Just having a little look at my plan. And checking the time, okay, good. And then make this your last one. And then hug the knee in and extend the legs straight, hamstring stretch, tail down, hands high, and then change to the other side, knee comes in, extend up, straight leg, and slowly release down. Okay. Let's roll over onto your side for me, please. Coming onto the side and make sure you're in a nice, well-aligned sideline position. So another key element of Pilates is precision, making sure you're in exactly the right position. The better the position, the harder the exercise will be and the better the result. So if you can, make sure that your neck is in line with the spine. The hips are stacked one on top of the other. The back is in neutral and then you lightly set your core to hold this position hip to shoulder. And then you bring your feet forwards to 45 degrees. So flex through the feet and we're just going to keep this simple again. Exhale, lift, inhale, point the toe and lower. Exhale, lift, foot flexed, inhale, lower, foot pointed. And try not to let this hip shorten. Shouldn't do, because that step forwards with the feet keeps the pelvis a little bit more still than we would if the legs were in line with the hip and shoulder. And you're going to feel this exercise through the glute here. So the other thing is I don't want this to come really high. I don't want this to come so high that the hips come out of alignment. The key is the hips stay one on top of the other, stacked. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. We're going for about eight on this one. But everybody's obviously working different sort of paces. So make this your last one. You should definitely feel that through the hip and bottom there. And then drop the knee in front for a stretch. Hold it there. Okay, what we can do is flip around to the other side. So push yourself up to sitting and we'll pop the feet to the other side and coming down and we're going to bring the legs forwards and again lovely position through the back exhale lift inhale lower point and flex the feet build strength through the feet and mobility but this is generally, this is to strengthen the glutes and the abductors. Nice and controlled. So breathe out as you lift. You've got that lovely flow of movement. You've got control, precision, 
centering through the core, concentrating on all of that. And that's it. Doing Pilates. Let's make this the last one. And then drop the knee in front for a stretch. Then just bring the legs together, push yourself up to sitting, take your time. And we're just going to bring the soles of the feet together, draw the feet towards you and gently reach forwards. And you can gently press the knees open with the elbows to hold this stretch nice and still. So don't bounce your stretches. Hold still. We haven't done too much today, so we've been doing some release stretches as we go along. So there isn't a huge stretch piece at the end of this. And then come onto your hands and knees and we'll just pop into child's pose. So bring your hands behind you as you lower the head round through the back though. Tuck yourself into a little ball. And release. Tuck the toes under, push back onto the toes, walk the hands back, hands to knees and we slowly roll up. Don't come up too quick, don't want anybody to get dizzy. And then taking the feet nice and wide for me please. And we'll do our double arm circle with a plie. So now you should feel more mobile, you should feel marvellous and set up for the rest of your day. Give yourself a hug and a squeeze and a pat on the back. So thank you very much for joining me. You can find us online www.bbody.co.uk that's B-E-B-O-D-Y or on Facebook, B Body Health and Fitness. All of our classes are online. So we also do video calls, live video call classes, Facebook live streams within private member groups. Um, we can do uh, one-to-ones as well, video call one-to-ones. So what you saw today was just a, a snapshot of what we can do, but I hope it got you moving. I hope you're gonna come and join me next week as well in your pajamas, okay? And uh, I hope you all have a great week and I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye.